Welcome to day two of the Wilderness Living Challenge, season six, I think it is. I don't even know anymore. We're gonna go out, we're gonna make sure our coon traps are still baited. Because uh, if they're not working properly, we are not going to have anything to eat tomorrow. Uh, it's supposed to rain uh, starting like 2 a.m. or something, all day till five. So we're not gonna be hunting deer in the rain, put it that way. So let's go get our traps set and uh, we can check the traps in the rain, that's fine. We can process in the rain if we've got something. But if we don't, we're in big trouble. I don't know, what is it, corn pieces and like... Peanuts? Peanuts is spoiled foods that we're not allowed to eat. Yep. And then Jerry's got, uh, what, the bag of squirrel S remnants? Oh, yep. Yeah. All right. Get through this swampy bit and we're just about up to the trap. Last trap. We baited all the other ones. Oh. That was almost over my boot. Almost over. Almost over my boot. Oh, it's getting worse here. Every time we come through, we dig this trench even worse. Bring aboard. Yeah. Whew. I would suck to have wet boots, especially with the rain tomorrow. Well, we got some good news. There's actually a raccoon already in the trap. So that kind of solves our problem with the raccoons. Right, Jer? Yeah. All right, so we got a raccoon. So we got something to do tomorrow. We can make some coon burgers. How does that sound, Jerry? Sounds well, good to me. You're looking up at the trees? Yeah. <laughs> See what's around. You never know. Yeah, the trap right. one heard, so. Well, we got to do something with this guy, rebate the trap. And uh, I don't think we're going to process it tonight, but first thing in the a.m. Yep. In the rain. Yeah. We got to check the traps again tomorrow morning, and maybe we'll have uh, five more to go with it. Yeah. That'd be, That'd good. be all right. Yeah, why not? Big feast of raccoons. Does that make you hungry? No. You're not I'm, hungry anymore? I'm pretty full. Yeah, we had a pretty good uh, dinner. Well, we didn't even eat uh, the dinner part. <laughs> we just had dessert. It's gonna be nice and tender squirrel for breakfast though. Yeah. And uh, raccoon for lunch. Yep. <laughs> well done. Well on the meat bowl. Time for bed. That door squeaks now. All right, I'm gonna go to bed. Oh, I've been sleeping out here on the balcony. It's actually kind of nice. Nice sit out here. Nice and cool. I don't like sleeping inside because it's uh, it's very hot with the wood stove, especially up in the the attic. Oh, hopefully, I don't get wet. As long as it's not too windy, uh, even if it rains tonight, I shouldn't get wet. I'm tucked right up against the wall here. But uh, I'll see you guys in the morning. We already know what we're doing. We're eating squirrels. I mean, yeah, we are eating squirrels. We're eating squirrels and raccoons. Things are looking good. Hopefully we get some more. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Well, good morning, guys. It's raining. And we knew it was gonna rain. How's my beard look? A little scruffy? A little scruffy. Anyway, I got a little bit wet. Sleeping out here, this part of here. Well, was, when it first came in, it was kind of blowy and rainy, so I was getting dripped on. Brought my sleeping bag inside, hung it up. Uh, I have to bring the rest of the stuff in here and let it dry too, but we gotta get a fire going and the wood's, wood's kind of wet out here. Anyway, I'm gonna get uh, some of our leftovers on. We have uh, apple, uh, a little bit of apple left. Uh, we'll cook some wild rice. And then we'll get our squirrel back going because we didn't really eat any of that last night. It should be starting to get tender now. So we'll throw that on the uh, stove. We got the uh, propane all set up, ready to go. So, yeah, we got a raccoon to clean, obviously. And then we got a raccoon chops to check. It's supposed to stay like this for most of today. So there's not going to be too many, uh, too much wildlife moving. So I may take a trip over to the pond, uh, catch myself a trout, maybe. We'll see. Uh, we'll probably do the evening uh, deer hunt because it's supposed to taper off by midday or so anyway. So yeah, let's get up and at them. Jeremy's up and at them. I woke up! <laughs> Squirrel's almost tenderized. 
He's breaking it apart. Jeremy's got some sea salt. Is it sea salt from Granada or whatever? It is, yep. Granada sea salt in there to help break the... I don't think muscle breaks down if you don't put any salt in there. That's my thought anyway. So that's almost ready to eat. Been working on our fireplace issues. Keeps getting blocked up to let uh, Kevin know that the uh, fire is not good and we want to upgrade. <laughs> Leave a message below. Yeah, take, right. <laughs> take Kevin the witch up. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if Lex that dry kidling. Got our wild rice. I think I did it perfectly this time. We think, Jerry, pretty good. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, and there's lots of bear fat in there. I finished the rest of uh, the bottle out. Right on. Uh, I don't know. Probably start off with that much. Oh, okay. In that jar. We're not making, not today. We didn't need that today. But have you still another whole jar? We're making more progress on your bear fat than on your maple syrup. That's true. <laughs> um, and that'll be. We have a dessert, a leftover dessert from last night. Um, you have to find out how we made that from yesterday. We'll check out that video and then we got our squirrels finally ready so it's all broken up we added some sea salt which jeremy brought from granada am i saying that right yeah grenada grenada or granada yeah potato potato <laughs> right banana uh, banana the stove's been really good to cook on yeah how easy is that right just turn it on and it's got perfect heat yeah we're so spoiled this season we are really so what do we got we got maple syrup and we got the adobo spice we can add for that to that and then uh i don't come up with a plan right yep have a seat we're gonna go for first the rice or uh, the squirrel well i want to have a bed of rice to pour all that squirrel goodness on top of that's a good idea i always have good ideas <laughs> <laughs> here's another good idea yeah maple syrup that's a good idea and then another good idea which you are not going to be able to not gonna partake you're not gonna do this the 75 spices. days dude or 76 days 76 days left in Jeremy's uh, Big Wild Year Challenge, which is uh, eating only wild food, uh, almost by whatever means necessary, I think at this point, right? You've kind of done a little bit of everything. Yeah. Like you've had to buy some food from the market and yeah, you're not just uh, collecting it all yourself by your own accord, so. No. Uh, originally you intended to do that. 90%. Yeah. And you're accepting some Ooh, gifts. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you, you wanted to just do it by by your own yeah. self, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a little much with kids and job. <laughs> well, it's a full-time job. We did really well. We put a lot of food by. Yeah. We well, also I, ate a lot of food. But. As we know, it's a full-time job. Yeah. Like, just doing this. Yeah. It's full-time. Like, we had, yeah. we don't stop from morning to evening. Um, it's, it's fortunate that we get to actually have a meal here, but... Yeah. <laughs> it's so early in the day. If and you want to get ahead, you have to hammer abundance and so that you get breaks later on. Yeah. Like what we did yesterday, if you watch yesterday's video, hammered the apples, hammered the walnuts. Right. That lets you take time off later on. And now we have, uh, you know, two five-gallon pails full of apples that we can... Almost four. Four? And is that big tub too. The walnuts, we've got, uh, Jeremy's got a couple drying out there now. It should be mostly uh, broken apart, so taking the bits of the meat. You don't need a lot of protein. A lot of people think that you need a lot of protein on these survival challenges, but you only need like, what, 200, 300 grams of it or something? Or less uh, than that? 150? One gram per yeah, pound right. of lean body mass, right? So, yeah. Oh, we've got a visitor. Oh, I can hear some thumping. Come in. Hey. Holy heat going on in here. <laughs> yeah. She's a, she's a warm. And so Mark came in. You uh, got a place for him to sit? Yeah, you can shuffle down here. You can sit and watch his heat unless you want to have some squirrel. Uh, no, I just ate breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, have a seat over here so you're in the frame. You guys know Mark. He was, uh, he's been on a, more than a few of my videos. How's it going? Good. Nice Jeremy, to Mark, nice to meet you. have a seat. I Feel hear free about to. You, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Squirrel, eh? Squirrel. How many squirrels did you get? Three. What is this? Squirrel. Your head squirrel? No. Venison broth? Don't be afraid of it. I'm not <laughs> afraid. I'm just. It's kind of weird for Duck me. Broth. Yeah. Oh, it smells good. Yeah, it's you're, really rich. You're one of those um, 
if it's like if the mainstream turkey, deer, you know, bear, moose, whatever, squirrels like a little bit. That's good. A little bit sold on it now. It's, not, it's actually wrong. quite good. There's only salt in there too. There's not even any spice. Like try. I don't care if you stick your fingers in there, but try, try with the maple syrup, maple rice, syrup and spice. And rice and spice, and like budoba. Budoba, yeah. That's good. Like you can eat that all day, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Right? I thought it'd be a little bit like chewy and. That's good. And, yeah, it's good. Yeah, the trick, the trick with the squirrel is to cook it a long time till it till it breaks apart. Like it's not perfect now, but it's pretty close. Good news, the field that I took you into before, mm -hmm. it just got cut. Uh, that's the beans. The, that's it, a really good field. Yeah. <laughs> in the last two days it was cut, because two days ago it was not cut. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming it was cut yesterday, because everybody was cutting beans like crazy yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Bad news is they're all going into a bean field. Like everything is off the water. All the, the rivers are empty. I heard them fly off the river at my house. Yep. Then I went out and checked all the rivers, spots that I know of that they're all hanging out in. Plus I checked a pond. All the birds are out, but we could possibly decoy them into um, the, the same field the that we were in. The same field that we were in. Because it's not far away. No. And they could, they'll be able to hear calls from the river pretty, like. Yeah, yeah well, you're going to hear them coming up off the pond. Right. Yeah. So, all right. so there's a possibility. Hopefully, we get into possibility. some. some uh, while I was deer hunting, the geese were flying over me and going right over um, the farm and right past that field I told you you could get into the standing corn, you might be able to decoy them into that on a warm day. Okay. A day like today, you'd never get them in there, but... Mm -hmm. So, that's a possibility too. Okay. All right, that was good. We're gonna finish hey. up eating here, we're gonna keep chatting, and then we're gonna go do something fun. Yeah, yeah. Now I gotta go cut trees. Put them in there. <laughs> that doesn't sound like fun. I know, it was scheduled, hydro shut off. We are going to go check our coon traps, and we're gonna get five for five. I think that's the goal here. Get the 22, turn the lights off so we're not using so much power. Uh, try to keep you guys as steady as they can with the head mount. Oh, it's supposed to rain like this all day. We got our one raccoon here. Jeremy's got some bait. Turkey leg? Yep. Oh, <laughs> still there? Yep. Turkey leg, pieces of squirrel bits, and some apples. Yeah. Nice. Well, I didn't hear the trap go off last night. No. So, I don't know if there's one in this one. You can see how much effort we've put into these traps now. We've got <laughs> like, turkey feathers everywhere, turkey guts, squirrel guts. I mean, it's a mess. There's a peanut butter jug and marshmallows. We've got the trail camera here, but probably nothing on it. Our swamp is getting swampier. And it's going to get worse throughout today. We got uh, This is the spot where we've been using to wash up. It's our access to water. This is all spring fed, obviously runoff too. There's a little bit of a dam here Beaver's been making. But we can go wash dishes here. We got one more trap set here. We got, oh, I forgot to say that we got rabbit traps set. Do you remember the rabbit traps, Jer? I just remembered them after we got to that first one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got some rabbit traps. Maybe we'll get to Cottontail. If I can get through here without getting my boots wet. Oh, she's filling up. It's getting closer and closer, guys. Whew. We made it. And that trap over there is not set off, so there's no coon there. That's 0 for 2. Maybe we'll have better luck with the cottontail trap. The cottontail trap we put uh, apple peels in. I don't know. There's lots of apples around. I don't know why they'd want to go in a trap, but we put it right in their home turf. I found a spot here where they're hanging out. And they're... Uh, They've kind of mowed the grass down and they hang around in this little thicket here. I've got a deer stand here that I don't use anymore because I sat there for a whole season and didn't catch anything. There's a tree stand up in that tree there. 
and I just actually made this trail not too long ago to try to get the deer to use this little runway and I could pick them off from that tree there but uh, nothing last year and I don't know if there's any deer even coming through here right yet so we're coming up on those traps here now grass in here is only grass like that because the rabbits have been picking the tops off of it continuously so there's a big thicket here where the rabbits can mill around and have been oh so only one deer in the middle of the night came through big fat doe it's no good so third trap here nothing in it bait's still all in there for the most part rebate yeah you now you're a master baiter <laughs> that was bad all right two more traps to go but this is the one trap we did catch one last night in so who knows maybe it's the lucky one oh there's a chipmunk hold on oh, shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> chipmunk just stealing our baits <laughs> It's not big enough to trip that pan off. Oh, for four. One more. Lucky number five. And Jeremy's doing some maintenance now. He's full of energy. Yep. From breakfast. Gonna throw some logs down here so we don't get our boots wet. Coming up on the last trap here. Brutes. Did you say brutes? Brutes. <laughs> Brutal. Brutes, man. It's the brutes. All right, let's go get dry. Yep. This is silly. Half time. Yep. Well, Wait this out. Oh, you got the raccoon still to cook. Clean. We still have one raccoon. No raccoons. Not even any squirrels walking around. So much rain right now. This is gonna shut us down. So, shut all the other animals down, shut us down too. Jeremy's just going for a walk to see if he can find a turkey. There's been some turkeys hanging around the property too. It's gonna be a slow day. It's gonna be a relaxed day, I guess. Eat some foods, catch up on calories. Come up with a plan. Real crystal fish. There we go, it's gonna be dinner. Well, I bet you always wanted to know how to cook yourself a coon, so we're gonna teach you how right now. Right, Jer? Yep, we're gonna teach ourselves too. You ever done a pot roast raccoon? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. It was it was uh, really similar to roast chicken, dark meat. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was really good. This is like the perfect size too. Yeah, I just nest right in there. Right? <laughs> we were planning on getting much more raccoons and much bigger ones, <laughs> but this is what we got. Yeah, we got a few days left though. Yeah. And so then to tip on another hunting spot, right? Yeah. Yeah, we got some options going now, but uh, we don't, it's not worth getting the uh, grinder all greasied up for one raccoon to try to make no. a burger. Yeah, it'd be good if we were processing a pile of them and we, uh, we're gonna eat some and freeze some. Yeah. Well, we're gonna cut a bunch of apples up, peel them up, and then probably fill it up full so it'll kind of steam and cook. Uh, fruit goes really well with meat, right? Sweets and berries and yeah. And pour, of course, we're going to put some maple syrup on top after. Yep. And then we'll I was serve this. I going to say, you know what oh, else goes really good yeah. with meat? And adobo later, but not you. Syrup. No. You should really shake the cheat. Just have some? Just have some. But it might make my remaining 75 days really difficult. <laughs> with the flavorless like salt and. Craving the wadobo. <laughs> you know, you just learn to appreciate things for their, uh, their natural taste and not, you know, for their barbecue sauce or their accoutrement. Sure. And uh, it just tastes like a, like an animal sometimes. Yeah. Well, we have salt. We have peppery wild spices. We use yarrow. We use. Uh, you didn't bring any though. 
No, I didn't. I told you to I didn't have some. too many left. <laughs> I, think. I don't use them that much. It's Delphine's the wizard with the spice. Oh, so I see. Um, you could have asked her for some advice. Yeah. Like, can you suggest a spice for raccoon, mm -hmm. perhaps, or a spice for squirrel? Montreal steak. <laughs> yeah, right. So we're probably gonna fill this full, right? Full, full. You Might want, as well. You just want them drowning in applesauce? I think so. so. The only thing that doesn't care if it rains is fish and beavers. Sound about right? Yep. Uh, and deer. <laughs> deer care. <laughs> we had a discussion about whether deer would be good weather for hunting deer in. I never see any deer in the rain, none. So raccoons all ready to go. Um, we're gonna go to the fish pond, we're gonna catch a fish. Jeremy's gonna decide whether it counts as a wild food or not. But he's saying he's catching stocked fish from a lake. It's kind of stocked fish from a lake up north. What's the difference? I don't know. Anyway, so we're gonna catch a fish. Well, we're probably gonna catch a fish at the fish pond. And Jeremy's gonna decide if he's gonna eat one or not. If he's not, I'm gonna eat it. If you can't tell, every season we're moving further and further away from gene being exclusively wild. And that's by adding in a little bit of agriculture here and there. So, hey, maybe one year we'll do like a gardening edition where, you know, plant the garden all summer and then just feast off of it in the fall. That would be fun. And we can do it here out of the cabin too. Just bring in like pumpkins and squash and zucchinis and heck even corn. I just saw a squirrel go through the bush, Jer. I think it was a black one. So I'm not even gonna fish here. I'm gonna let Jeremy have the honors because Jeremy's not a very good fisherman. So any chance he can have oh. to catch a fish. Thanks. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If Jeremy can't catch a fish in here. Oh, you already got one, don't you? Oh, they're just ignoring you. Yeah, they don't like worms. There we go. It's a good looking fish. Yeah. You got lots of power in these things too. Yeah. So every, every fish is kind of different. The trick for this fish is basically to cast in and then let it sit on the ground on the bottom because uh, they're used to not eating things that move. So they're all right here, Jay. Oh yeah, here they come. Man. Yeah. Oh, you got a small one. Oh. <laughs> Smaller. The, none of them are real small, but it needs to be great any time of day. There's a couple of trout for dinner. Bring these back to the cabin. Oh, we got the Fox Pro game caller now. Since we're here, and we actually talked to the owner on the way in, and he said there's a big raccoon problem. They want them gone. They're pulling down all the corn. So we're gonna try the uh, the uh, coon fighting uh, set here, which we tried uh, on the last video. So we'll see if we can't drag something out. Uh, yeah, big fat raccoons. We did try the set before here uh, with Mark and just as a goof and we waited maybe five minutes and, we, and like okay there's nothing coming and then we started walking and then mark noticed something scurry back up the tree so we figured it's probably a raccoon kind of on its way but you got to wake them up and you got to get them out of their bed because they're sleeping right now they're nocturnal but for some reason they like to see that fight so they're going to come out Let's see if we can get this to work we're going to rig up jeremy's got his gun i got my gun we'll just head over here in the cedars and Try to draw something out. There's lots of raccoons here though, like everywhere. Just gotta get them to come. Hopefully we can add a few raccoons to the uh, roster. We're not fishing anymore. Now we're hunting. So you have to go in hunting mode. Jer Jeremy's got his really old, old gun. We talked about it last episode. So you have to go check it out. I'm using my really, really new gun. It's a Ruger. We actually don't really need to whisper. We're gonna have a showdown. <laughs> We're gonna showdown. Old versus new. <laughs> Get a bunch of raccoons coming, it'll be a showdown for sure. 
I'm just gonna go back on the other side of the pond here. There's cedar bush and it's pretty thick. So there could be some raccoons hanging out just about anywhere. Hopefully they're not all at the cornfield, which is at the very far back. As we had a uh, trap set here for a coyote, the big live trap, and we caught like raccoon after raccoon in it. But of course it was a different time of year. Uh, we haven't figured out the raccoons yet. We don't know what they're doing. They're probably eating corn. It's my guess. So until those cornfields come down and they have to, you know, explore and find some different foods, we're gonna have a hard time getting them to go into the side of a trap. But who knows? Maybe a call will work. on the first run unless you call calling crows luck probably a little high for shooting but <laughs> yeah. well they spotted us so <laughs> if we would have been camoed up and hiding we probably could have got a crow yeah that crows have pretty good eyesight they're not stupid we might even call in a coyote like this too it's all in season nobody nobody hunts them nobody goes after them so we have unlimited raccoon. Take as many as we want. Well, we'll try one more maybe. Got some time before the evening hunt. Really, <coughs> not good. Here's a big tree that I probably at some point had a raccoon in there. Maybe there's a raccoon in there right now. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. I'm hungry. <laughs> this is pretty close to where we called the first time though, right? Yeah, we just rose right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what you're looking for. Oh yeah, for sure. Trees like that. Like, I don't know if that's too hollow and they might get wet in it, but... The base looks dry. I wonder how much energy it would cost to knock this thing over to see if there's a raccoon inside. Chainsaw and an axe would be pretty short. Probably push it over. It's pretty soft. <laughs> you want to try to push it over? <laughs> not really. You're not curious to see if there's one inside? Well, I think it would have come out, but... You think it would have come out just from kicking it? Yeah. Um. From kicking it or from playing the call nearby. Here those hollow trees look good.
All right, back in the cabin. I'm gonna get dried up. I'm gonna get ready for the evening hunt. We're gonna go back out for deer again. Um, put a little bit of wood in the stove and get that raccoon, like not cooking, cooking, but like starting to get cooked um, so that we don't have to wait like two or three hours. It's probably not gonna take that long, but we don't wanna be waiting until like 10, 10 p.m. Um, cooking that raccoon. We wanna be able to eat it when we get back. So if we partially cook it now and partially cook it later, that'll be all good. We want it to be nice and tenderized. So yeah, and then we're gonna take a little bit of a break. And Jeremy's gonna clean up some walnuts, uh, dehusk them. We've been throwing them out by the uh, fireplace now and drying them out. Um, I don't think they're dry enough to eat now, but they're well, maybe they're getting there. And this is getting gonna get a little bit of a crust on it. But uh, I don't think Jeremy wants to bring all the extra surplus husks back home. I'm gonna heat myself up some leftovers. I got that squirrel leftover for this morning and those. Uh, a little bit of wild rice and there's also the apple mash with the um, acorns so I'm gonna cook that up real quick so I can go hunt on a full stomach and I'll be able to sit a lot better it won't be so cold it's not it's not the greatest weather in the world right now doing this challenge as a homestead edition has been great um, fire up the stove like that turn it off like that fantastic Makes everything so much easier and doable. Whew. Just have a hot meal like that. Like that. That gas stove works awesome. Go over, grab some fish. Not take too long. Um, a lot of people don't realize how long these little things take. Try to catch a fish out of a lake it might take you all day and paddling a canoe so many calories. It's no wonder we switched to agriculture. Now I know you don't think this looks very good. It looks like purple purple mash. Acorns, apples, maple syrup, and bear fat. Tastes like cake to me with the crust, pie crust mixed in. 100% wild apple, acorn, maple, cobbler. Uh, we're gonna go for a little bit of a walk here. We got our trophy trout. I'm gonna go down to the creek here. It's the best place to clean up anyway. That way we don't make a mess of the camp and all that. And we're probably gonna throw the fish guts in that advanced trap. I think we got all so many guts in there, we might actually catch our coyote or something. It's crazy how much stuff we got in there. Crazy how nothing's visited it. Visited it, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, gonna check the trail camera maybe on the way back and see what's going on. I'd like to keep these trout in the creek here for breakfast. So I think with me just eating lunch and us having that coon really for dinner, late night dinner, and we're not really gonna need any other thing to eat. But it's good to have them here. Um, I could sink them in a trap, but then I have to disable a trap. You know, I could set, put them inside the live trap and, and then uh, nothing can really get at them. We're gonna clean these guys up so they're boneless. There's a way of doing it pretty much like I have been doing it, which is just to cut around the head and then go up the butt and gut it. But then I can take the rib cage out. I might not be able to do it right here or show you right here. Maybe I can. I'll just have to tilt the camera down. We'll get the guts out first and then I can show you how I do that. It's pretty cool and then it just it lets you just eat and enjoy the trout rather than try to fuss through bones and all that. I think a lot of comments from season uh, two was that we should be using the fish guts and all that for bait. 
Well, you've seen how well our bait has worked so far and we've used even some modern leftovers for bait. The thing is, um, it doesn't, guts don't have a, like guts from a big animal for sure. Like a deer or something, That's that's got a smell. You know, that's got a real smell that attracts things. But like fish guts, when they're fresh, they don't, they just don't smell. They don't have a big odor, so um, it's not going to be a big attractant. I mean, we could put it in a plastic bag, and over time, the other will rot if they're kept moist. Man, this fish is just jammed full of food. I'm going to keep that separate, and we'll get our gill plates out. Pull that out, and then pull the whole rakers and everything. Don't need any of that. We'll get rid of our dorsal aorta again. This ticking down on the ribs here. And then once we get down here, we'll just split it, split it open. But what we're mainly aiming for here is to get underneath and get the grass out of the way. It's obviously a lot easier to do on a table. I just want to get under those ribs and then kind of pull them up a little bit because we're going to get behind it and then we're just going to follow that all the way to the belly so that we can pretty much get out just those bones there we go that's uh, hardly any waste <laughs> you can tell right there it's just the rib cage here and of course you could i mean you could cook that and eat it but there's hardly anything in there so we're going to do the same thing on the other side and we're going to end up with a pretty much boneless throat. So this is a five gallon pail plus whatever was in that bag, which is probably half a pail at least, right? Yeah. So what do you think? Half of its husk probably? More than More half. Because yeah. once this gets down, it's going to be not a huge pile of nuts, right? Yeah. Um, so it'll be pretty space efficient going home. How's your knuckles? More room for, uh, more room for apples, I guess. Uh, they're good so far. Some of them are pretty tough. Yeah. Um, I think it would be handy if you stepped on each one before you husked it. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't want to stay in your porch, so. Except the squirrels will be by tuna on the siding. They will. Yeah. They'll think it's inside. Yeah. <laughs> Come back and it'll look like a Swiss cheese cob with just squirrel holes everywhere. So we're gonna have the same plan tonight. Go out around four, shoot stuff. I'll check the raccoons on the way back. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep, sounds good. The raccoon traps. Maybe I'll go try that uh, new to be spot on that cornfield. Yep. Um, see how that pans out. And I'll take some of these husks and dump them at the squirrel stand. And there'll be a pile of squirrels there for tomorrow morning's hunt. Yeah. Alrighty, almost ready to go. Got my ASAP camo. I'm not going to buckle this up yet. I'm going to get halfway buckled because i got to go to the other property. Jeremy's uh, already off and running because he wants to, he's focused on the squirrels. I don't blame him. Well, I mean, I don't blame him. <laughs> Might as well get a squirrel if you're not seeing any deer. I'm not going to bring my 22 with me because uh, where I'm going, uh, same spot as yesterday. So it's a pretty tight spot that uh, if you move around at all, you're going to you're gonna spook any deer around. So if I shoot anything and then go back and try to find it, because if I shoot it, I have to go get it right away or I'm gonna lose it. Jeremy's going out to the cornfield, up this way. Um, we're gonna get a deer. We're gonna try, we're gonna do our best. All right guys, I'll meet you over at the tree stand. All right 
right guys here we go we are at the other property uh i wanted to say something i don't really remember what i was going to say oh um it's a lot of walking the seasons previous seasons well texas was a lot of walking too um different kind of walking though this one i've got like i don't know 10 football fields before i get to my stand um, other seasons have been more canoeing, more paddling. Man, those fish seasons, we paddled a ton. But this is all land. Like, there's not a whole lot of water around here. There's a couple rivers where the geese will land. But we haven't any, managed, managed to get any permission for the, those properties. So, here it's all, it's all terrestrial stuff. Kind of why we put the pond in, to be honest. Because then we'd have a place to fish up here. But uh, you guys think we're just going from one spot to the next, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's not the case at all. I'm putting some miles on like crazy. And run and gun, nonstop, back and forth, to and, for, to and from. I just heard something, I got corn on this side here. And it looks like it's all been mashed down too. The whole first two rows have been really decimated. The raccoons will come in and grab those and once they fall down then the deer grab the bottoms the deer nip the tops too but uh, i'm gonna show you kind of a little bit about the landscape that we're working with it's definitely farm country so i'm gonna set this camera aside and we're gonna meet you in the tree now so that was my thought <laughs> and share you share that with you i hope we get a deer it's possible but it's not likely. You never know. What happened? Well, we're back at the cabin here. Uh, it looks like Jeremy is uh, got the lights on. That or Kevin came out. Uh, Kevin and Grant were out here the other night. I'm excited to see how uh, Jeremy made it. Or maybe he's not back. Maybe it's Kevin. I'll we'll have to have a peek. Yeah, it looks like somebody else. We got some visitors. Maybe it's Mark. Um, I only saw one deer out in the cornfield. And uh, it wasn't really one I was hunting because I wasn't hunting the cornfield. There's no way I was going to get out that, uh, that far. And uh, I did walk on a coyote. Um, I was within 10 yards just walking out in the field, so that was pretty cool. Let's see who's here. <laughs> Peek in the window. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That was a weird, weird shadow up top. Uh, <laughs> freaked me out. Let me get the night vision off here. One squirrel. Did you get him? I did. Where is he? On the porch. Oh, all right. 29 yard shot. I checked it with uh, Adam's rangefinder. <laughs> you rangefinded it and shot it? Well, I did after. Yeah. And Mark, did you see anything? You didn't go out. I didn't go out. <laughs> nope. No? Cutting trees. But you got a plan for us? What's the plan? Uh, pigeon hunt. Okay. So there was probably 20 pigeons or so flying around uh, while we were cutting the trees from the hydro lines. And so they'll be in the barn, hopefully, now. Yeah. And we can take care of two problems. So Lack of food problem and yeah. Yeah. clean up. Poopy hay problem. Eh? Uh, they give goats listeriosis. Are they going to give us listeriosis too? No, something to, something to do with... Because they poop, poop 
the poop yeah. on the bales, the bales get eaten, then apparently it's really bad for goats. But it doesn't seem hay. to hurt cows. Don't eat the hay? Don't eat the hay? No, nope. don't eat the hay. Don't eat the poop. Don't eat the poop. Cook the poop before you eat it. Then you don't and get watch for raccoon poop, because maybe there's a coon kicking around too. Oh. Do we need to bring a coon gun too? No, we'd have to trap them. Oh yeah. Because everything you would fire in there would go through the tin in the roof. Yeah. And we can't be putting holes in the roof. Can we use that one? No. <laughs> no, that would leave big holes in the roof. <laughs> so here I am thinking we're going to eat our coon and it's not even ready yet, but we're going to leave it on the stove and hopefully it's ready by like 2 or 3 a.m. I have it for breakfast. May I have to cook that fish? Yeah. Anyway, all right, let's, we'll see if we can get some pigeons. All right, so the deal is we've got one gun. We're gonna use a pellet gun here. So if you come back early in the morning, the sun's coming up. Yeah. You might see it. Can we come back with like a 22 or a, yeah, Jeremy anything. has a little air rifle. We don't, not gonna shoot in here with the 22. No, you can shoot in here. Oh, not with the 22, but you can shoot with the pellet gun here. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he's got a pretty high power pellet gun. Well, it's one of those 500 feet. Yeah, Seven, 900? Nine, oh, geez. yeah, it's, it's we don't want to shoot it in here, but we could, we could <laughs> walk around good. outside if you don't mind. Oh yeah, no, shoot as many as you can. Okay, but in the morning, they sometimes sit on the grain top of the Yeah, I've never seen them out, out in the back too there. Oh, I know, but it's just early in the morning when the sun's coming up, they yeah. all sit there and it's warm. Yeah. And they sit there and then it's kind of, yeah, the, the bucks are fighting down there. Big, big, big <laughs> bucks. Yeah. 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 All right. But, well, yeah, if you don't get anything tonight, come back tomorrow morning. You might, okay. You know, might early. You got to be early. Though. Early, early? Like that uh, white one that just landed on the crossbar. The white one, the run to the right? Yeah. Take them both. <laughs> you do headshots with this? Is it pretty accurate? Yeah. That's an over one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying for a headshot. Test the gun out. Show me how it's done. <laughs> Grab the light there, Jeff. Which one wants to run this high power? Oh, you bugger. <laughs> These pigeons are going to be good eating because they're grain fed. That's because he's not flying quite, quite tight. Nice. Can you take that before he falls down the hole? Okay. You want your leg? That one? Headshot. <laughs> you gotta go way up there to get it. Oh, he's stuck on the bales up here. Oh, I'm he didn't fall between the bales or he's lost. He died quick. Yep. Safety's on. You have to pounce on him. Oh, you bugger. Did he go down? Find him? Well, he's down and we're going to be doing some crawling to get to him. Jerry's going to do it. Jerry shot it. You got to go over there, Jerry, in that little crack. Can you get through there or no? I don't know that he can get through there. It depends how tight Peter's got the bales together. I'd... I don't know if I can get over there. There's posts in the way too, right? Sorry, if you fall in there, it's like a crocodile pit. Yeah, crocodile pit of... Uh, I got Ruben here, where's the pigeon? How far does he gotta go? Right to the back of the wall. How hungry are you, Jer? Well, if I, had a, if I had a stick with a hook, I could get it. Can you see it? No. Is that... Were you shining it on the pigeon there? Got started making one. Hold that or put him out of his misery, whatever you want to do. I'm gonna put him on the ground and I'll step on him. Just uh, spit his head. Because yeah. we gotta kind of catch him before they come down the hole. I don't know if I want to stick down the hole. Going out the hole, maybe? Uh -huh. 
right there. I saw it hit the wood. When you get down to your last one, I'll shoot. <laughs> Just wow. There you go. Catch him. Oh! oh. Now you right gotta go down, down that hole. hole. <laughs> I won't be able to get out of there. Oh yeah, you can. You got a rope if I can't? No, oh, I'll grab you. <laughs> it's a ways down. No, it's three bales high. Is that it? Yeah. You can jump onto the first one, yeah. and then I can reach your hand. That's what we had to do last time. <sighs> we've done this. Be we've been down this road before. Okay. <laughs> Take your, give me your wallet. Here's a, here's a pellet. If I can't get out, you just shoot me. <laughs> put you out of your misery. <laughs> hey, you better not put this high power light up. Put it on low beam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, blind the poor man. I'm really claustrophobic, guys. Can you still see the bird? Little, little Timmy. Whoa! Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting the throw. Little Timmy fell in a well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're oh. light. Got it. Caught it. Yeah, hand it up to me if you want, and then. Uh, It'll be in the dark then. Yeah, that's all right. You are too scared. Here, <laughs> give me your arm. Ready? Yep. Okay. Jump. I'm okay. <laughs> that's an adventure. <laughs> Where's the other one I have to dive for? Uh, he's down this hole. You're all fired up now. Yeah. Get him while he's hot. But he won't be as claustrophobic because there's a doorway there. Oh, well, let's go open the door. Well, it is open. Oh, the door is open. Yeah. I swear I let Jeremy shoot them all. Yeah. <laughs> then I don't have to go get them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is half the fun though. If you're wondering why we're getting rid of them all, all up here is all droppings, all droppings, all here, and that causes disease in any of the farm animals here. It's all droppings, all of it. What the beams look like now is what the tops of these back bales will look like in about six months. And then they're gonna have to eat that. And then, yeah, well, yeah. it would be brushed off, but you're still always gonna have some of it in the bales. So. Yeah, so that's the listeriosis issue. Yeah. That one? Yeah, here, take him and step on him. He was still kicking. Oh, he's still going? Yeah, yeah. Three so far, and there's another one down there. So it's four. Ready? Yeah. All right. We actually managed to get uh, five, but uh, we lost two. Well, we didn't lose them. We just fed them to the cats. <laughs> they fell down uh, in between the bales. And I saw Jeremy run down and get one. But the other ones were a little too tight <laughs> to go in. So we get two, cats get two. I think all around that's a win. And uh, there's five less pigeons flying around laying poop on all the hay for the goats. Well, that was a fun little adventure, little side detour. That's why it's nice to have connections. Um, and speaking of connections, tomorrow we have a good plan. Tomorrow we're going to set out for geese. Mark's got uh, access to a bunch of different good properties where geese are landing and they just harvested all the soybean. So that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Um, what do I want to check? Oh yeah, I want to check my, uh, check the raccoon. Jeremy said it was actually doing a pretty decent boil on here. Check that out. How does that look? Pretty good. It's got a good simmer on there now. That meat's going to be tenderizing. I don't know if it's going to be 100% ready to go for tonight. Uh, we have a little bit of leftovers. Um, some of our squirrel, which probably should be eaten. probably fire that up because it has to be eaten anyway. We've got some rice on the go, which I have to check to see if that's done. But uh, it'd be nice to have a camp person that's just kind of hang around and feed us <laughs> while we would just keep going and doing forays and finding more food. I'm gonna just flip this raccoon over. The bottom's not too bad. Probably almost done. A little on the chewy side, maybe. Apples are all done. Got a nice broth in the bottom here. 
It smells good. Now we're steaming up. So that raccoon doesn't actually smell half bad. It doesn't smell like a raccoon at all, which means it's probably gonna taste pretty good. There goes the processing. Good, I had wanted to finish them before we went for our evening hunt, but I didn't. But I thought I'll finish them up while uh, that raccoon finishes cooking. And then we can tidy up the spot. Yeah, so I can sleep there. Yeah. <laughs> In the rain again. My sleeping bag actually got wet, so that's why I'm not so happy with the rain tonight. I'll try to tuck in a little bit closer here. Only the top bag got wet, but it didn't rain as much as it is. Well, it probably did. Rain quite a bit overnight, right? It rained more in the night than it did during the day. Yeah. It today more than it is right now. Yeah, today wasn't too bad. Coon is served. Ready for it? Uh, I'm so ready for that. <laughs> smells uh, apple-y. You know what would be good on that? Uh, maple syrup? Maple syrup and some adobo. <laughs> Can't do it though. That would be... No? Nope. 75 days. 76 Just days. I noticed you're representing Groma Nice. Yeah. Is that one of the shirts I give you? Yep. Right on. Right, favorite, dig in. Favorite knife brand. Rice. We got rice. We got squirrel. And we got coon. It's like we're adding to it. We're getting better and better. Yeah, look at all this food. Smorgasbord. And meat on the meat bowl. Syrup. Adobe. So you want half this rice? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Half, half of it, and then I'm gonna save half for breakfast. I think probably. Oh yeah. Let's have a bite to eat before we go goose hunting, cause I'm gonna be hungry. You gonna take a bite of that coon? Yeah. Looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah. It's gonna be the best raccoon oh. you ever had, probably. It's really appley and good. It's like. Uh, Probably tastes a little bit like pork. Like pork apple. Yeah, it looks like it's got that white pork texture. Yeah. It's pretty hot. You didn't just get the gland, did you? <laughs> no. We didn't find the glands. That's good. So we're just ladling. You don't want the big ladle anymore? Well, it looks like you were still using it. Yeah. It's not going as good. No, it's down at the bottom. We should mix in some coon ladles in there too, or what? We're not going to mix it in there yet. Uh, I don't know. It looks nice and fatty and apple-y. So we're on day two of the Willis Living Challenge, and we haven't gone through one maple syrup jar yet. So we're actually technically behind by one jar. Probably way behind. So I'm going to do my part. Yeah. That should be you enough. Pull your weight. Pull my weight. So you're welcome to some too. So this is from the property. We harvested this from this very property earlier in the year. This is good. This is the squirrel um, mix. I don't know, what is it now? It's just like a family of it's wild like ever things. Stew. Yeah. Ever stew with everything. That would be a shout out to um, I'm just gonna take Zach Fowler. The ever stew, yeah, mm -hmm. from uh, 30 days Texas. This raccoon wasn't that fatty. No. Juvenile, right? The fat tastes like apple. <laughs> apple fat. Like, like a mild apple. That's all right. Let me get a piece of apple. muscle. So if you do, if you do decide you're going to eat a raccoon, uh, do some research on the glands. Uh, Jeremy and I have a video up somewhere. I think maybe in the members only area of my channel where we deglanded it. But I think my presumption is that it, juvenile, which is this one, probably don't have very pronounced glands to identify. Maybe during the mating season, they get probably pretty engorged on, especially a mature one. Yeah. And that would probably taste it, make it taste very gamey. Sometimes I've found them and sometimes I haven't. It's easier to find them on a less fatty raccoon like this. But um, later fall or the older raccoons where they've got a really thick layer of fat, it's hard to dig through that and find the glands. There's no spices on there. There's, we, there's, there's a little bit of salt, that's it. Yeah, a little bit of sea salt. Um, it tastes like, tastes like pork. This one tastes like pork. Mm. Now, after boiling it, 
if you put it in the oven and like broil, mm -hmm. boil and broil or barbecue it, it would t probably taste like chicken yep. at that point. What this reminds me of is, uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, but had pork chops with applesauce on top. Mm -hmm. That's what it reminds me of. For sure. A little bit too hot to handle still. Mm -hmm. It's not quite fall off the bone yet. It's really close though. Yeah. Like you can twist it off the bone. Mm -hmm. I'm getting awfully close where the glands would be. In that, in that fold in of that, heat. Yeah. yeah. But so we'll see if I get a, a mouthful of just raccoon. Yeah. It's like raccoon body odor. You can bottle that up and sell it to nobody. Nope. <laughs> no. And that, that mouthful was fine, so, so far so good. Yeah. We know all about glands when we're cleaning skunk to try to eat. We had to be very careful mm -hmm. about that one specific gland. Yeah. I don't know why a raccoon got such a bad rap. Maybe because they're just really common and they obviously carry parasites and things like that, but they taste absolutely fine. Yeah. I like them. So like the sixth raccoon I've eaten this year. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad we can't get more. <laughs> that was the idea. Yeah. Well, tomorrow maybe. Maybe. Well, we might still do a couple of raccoon hunts, right? With the Fox Pro. We can, we'll keep trying. I don't know. I don't like, all you can do is keep trying. It's, just, yeah. it's the time of year where the corn's just in that right stage where they're not really fighting for food. It's, they've got everything right there, yeah. ready to go. Yeah, I really think if you ran a coon dog along uh, those field edges at mm -hmm. night, you'd turn up, you'd put so many raccoons up the trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd be the way to go. So keep following along, guys. Uh, tomorrow we're going to go on a goose hunt. Uh, there's one episode that precedes this one to figure out how we got here. But this is homesteading edition of the Wilderness Living Challenge. So we're making use of the cabin here as a home base to kind of branch out and then add wild foods to some of the things that we have pre-collected essentially. Yeah. Um, the maple syrup and the rice <coughs> and Salt. salts and- Acorns. Yeah, the acorn, the acorn flour. That's uh, been a staple item too. It's something that Definitely, you need to have if you're going to try to live off wild foods. Well, I'm going to fill up on this. I'm assuming Jeremy's going to be doing the same. Uh -huh. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. See you tomorrow. Day three. <laughs>